Hi, my name's Dr. Ross Hauser. We're filming at Caring Medical Florida in Fort Myers, Florida. We're actually at the Hauser Next Center. Mm -hmm. And I have another amazing person to talk to today, Tommy. And then uh, you're, I like your story in the sense that uh, you're obviously very intelligent, and then you're in the healthcare field, so obviously bring up you know, uh, you know your experiences there. But you know, some people get to the point where they almost get suicidal, or they get so depressed that you know they wonder if I'm ever going to get better. So imagine if like you're a nurse, you know, who's soon going to be a nurse practitioner. Yes. So congratulations on that. Thank you. That you know, with all your vast wisdom, that you know, you have a chronic condition, which you'll talk about, which does somewhat relate to COVID. So that's obviously an important topic for all of us. And then, you know, you chose to go outside the box, like you chose to go outside of traditional medicine. So Tommy, if you just tell us your story and your experience, you know, here at Caring Medical and yeah. you're hopeful now or? I am, um, in June 2020, I was diagnosed with COVID and I was pretty ill with that. I still have the long hauler symptoms as of today still. Um, and then in, what's today's date? Today is August 24th, yep. 2021. So yeah. it's been about 14, 15 months now yep. dealing with it. But in September, I developed a bowel obstruction of 2020. And in October, I had another bowel obstruction. I was in the hospital. Um, did you have surgery or they got it without no, surgery? No, I did not have surgery. Okay. And I just started having major digestive problems and rapid weight loss. I was not able to eat anything without vomiting. So my GI doctor, we did upper and lower scopes, which were normal. And then also had the gastric emptying study that showed gastroparesis. So they felt like it was post-viral gastroparesis from COVID. Okay. Um, so I had an NG or NJ tube placed for that and had tube feeding for a little bit. Then that kinked off and had to come out. But um, I started doing major research on gastroparesis because I really didn't understand it. Being a nurse, I wanted to understand it more and realized it was related to the vagus nerve. So that triggered some more research and. I was reading journal, like journal articles, and actually ran across one of yours that talked about digestion and neck issues. So that started my process of looking into vagus nerve problems, and I ran across cervical instability, and that was kind of like a light bulb went off um, because I've had neck pain since I was 17. So 30 years almost I have been dealing with neck problems. So all the symptoms made sense at that point. And I thought, I have to try to come and see you all. So after did, I did a lot did, of research. Did you have other symptoms? I mean, I know you came for that, but mm -hmm. you know, did you have any other vagal symptoms or other symptoms related to your neck that um, you could share? Yeah, absolutely. Ringing of the ears okay. constantly, heart palpitations, brain fog, daily headaches, uh, vertigo, Plus, then I had the mal just the malnutrition from the gastroparesis, and my stomach wasn't working at all, upper or lower. You know, when uh, a person gets like procedures, like you're in the hospital, da da da, and then you're not feeling good, and then you, as a healthcare provider, uh, you know, you know, let's be honest, you know, most we're all trained in traditional medicine, you know, and, and obviously. You know, when you need a feeding tube, we're grateful that, you know, traditional medicine's here. Right. But at some point, you know, you start getting depressed. So if you could maybe elaborate just a little bit on, sure. you know, like you had to yeah, probably fight a lot of depression. Dark, dark days, dark days. Um, sorry. It's been, it's brought a lot of hope coming down here with you all. Um, I had immediate, like I, I was using enemas three times a week since last September until the day after my first set of injections mm. here. And the next day at the hotel, I started hearing bowel sounds, which I had not heard at all for eight months. Um, and since then, it's improved drastically. My symptoms have. And then how, Sorry. when was your first treatment that you had here? 
Thank you All for right. sharing that. In May. Oh, so it, ha it hasn't been that long. No. It's been, uh, yeah, just a few <laughs> months, five, five, four or five months. I had, in May, I stayed for two weeks and had okay. two, tr two sessions and then went home. Um, then I became June and July, and this this week in a few days I'll get my fifth oh, okay. fifth set. Um, but it's just been I've gained 25 pounds awesome. back. I'm eating way better, but as a overall as a whole, I feel tremendously better and just so blessed. That's where the tears come from because I felt hmm, I've had a lot of support at home, but I felt very alone. Uh, in this journey until I got here. Even though my doctors at home were great, they all went, understood why I was looking to come elsewhere. Um, but I just felt very called to come here. And as soon as I walked through the doors, I knew I made the right decision. Oh, awesome. And you guys have been wonderful. And in the, the team. No, thank you so much. It, now, you had a lot of symptoms. You didn't mention yes. a lot of symptoms. So do you feel like they're all getting better and are they are you, well, like, where would you say you are in your journey? Like you're halfway there or you're... No, more than that. Like what? Where would you say? Um, 75%. Okay. I probably so, ranked myself a 20% whenever I got here. Okay. I would imagine in May, but I've had significant improvement. And then, you know, you're, and, you're in training. So, yes. I mean, you, you've been able so, to, you know, do all your nurse practitioner training. So how's that going? It's great. I love it. It's very busy. I work full time. I'm in nurse prac school full time. I'm in clinicals. And I've been lucky enough to get to do around here with you at Caring Medical. I love it. That's great. It's been a wonderful experience. Very grateful. Um, I just think I'd like to share that for people like people with gastroparesis who are starving to death. They are literally starving to death. They need to be having their neck checked out. Um, I know it's not all always related to the neck, but when you're to that point that you don't think you're going to live from it, I think it, it would be just a wonderful idea to have your neck checked for instability because it's almost immediate results and the, there's such a lack of knowledge, I think, about prolotherapy in other places. Um, yes. So many areas can be treated chronic pain, I mean just chronic pain in general. Somebody might have the flu, then they, then they, you know, or COVID, you know, mm -hmm. real bad chest congestion, and then they have some unusual symptoms. You know, like they might have some unusual symptoms, yeah. like gastroparesis or this or that. So logically, you would think like, oh, I had COVID, I got asked gastroparesis, so somehow it's related to that, or I had the flu, and then I have a tingling in my body, zingy you know, electricity yes. in my body or, but we forget every time you cough, it's a little whiplash. Every, you know, it's, it's like a little whiplash. So, you know, like when you cough or you're mm -hmm. throwing up, like you said, I'm throwing up, I'm throwing up, I'm throwing up, you don't realize. So if you're a loose jointed person, like, yes. you know, you have a lot of flexibility all over. So you, you know, had, you know, 400 little whiplashes, you know, right. with coughing and vomiting you know, and we forget the structural thing that happens when you're sick, you know, like, in other words, your neck, your neck, and then, you know, you're propping up the pillows and you're just like, your neck's getting in all kinds of kind of crazy contortions. Yeah. So there's that. And then also people have procedures, like almost every day I, I have, my staff comes to me, like this morning it was, the person was intubated and then after the intubation, their tongue was really swollen. Then they had chronic, like basically chronic tongue pain mm -hmm. after the procedure. The same thing can happen after like a root canal or a dental procedure. And so every, so when you have symptoms after that, they think it's from the procedure, but yeah. it's actually from, it's probably from, you know, from if you're getting a dental procedure, <laughs> And you're like that for 45 minutes or an hour. It's a very, uh, it's a very odd position. So sometimes it's just that, or in your case, at some point, your neck looseness became neck instability. Yes. And then once you get upper cervical instability, I mean, you can get any brain symptom or. Uh, the so neurological symptoms were very off the chart. Whenever I came down here. Doesn't that make sense? Like.
It actually could have oh. been. Well, every time I would vomit, I would have a migraine or felt like the right side of my head was so, had so much pressure. Um, Which so it did. It was just a constant sign. Yes, yeah. that was, yeah. and it was so good to come and actually get answers. I've been to a lot of places over the years and I'm just told it was arthritis in my neck. But when I came here, I actually got answers. Like there's a reason why it's all on the right side because my pressures were high. Um, it was just abnormal studies. Yeah, why don't you just talk about that? Because sometimes it's hard, maybe people, you know, they have an issue and it's like, you know, because we do do a bunch of diagnostic testing here at Caring Medical. Yeah. And then, uh, and you just mentioned like you actually were grateful that, you know, when we looked at, you know, when we look at eye pressures, then we look at optic nerve sheath diameter, which is a sign of increased brain pressure. Yes. I mean, you were glad, right? Because we oh, we confirmed. Absolutely. Like, at a point of, through this, I felt like I'm almost crazy. You know, like, nobody's getting this. I know there's in my body, there is something big time wrong and couldn't get any kind of um, definitive answer. So being able to come here and get the measurements that shows, like, the damage to the right vagus nerve, which goes down to the belly. So the neck tells the belly what to do. And I mean, that was eye-opening for me to learn through all this. So I try to constantly advocate for people with digestion issues who have a hard time. I'm like, you really need to get your neck looked at. But yes, getting answers the first time I was here was, I think that is so yeah. incredible. Well, it's and affirmatory when, that you actually have a structural problem causing another problem. Like you have neck instability or misalignments right. or bad curve, and then it's causing you know, your vagus nerve not to function right. right, which of course the vagus nerve, that's what gives you contractility. So if you don't, if the vagus nerve isn't working the digestive tract, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be, uh, the motility of it's not gonna be good. And you could end up with where the digestive tract actually doesn't work. Right. And you know, that's, that's what you're saying saying. is like, it's not right well, our hope is that people who have dysmotility or they have bowel obstructions or they have um, gastroparesis and nobody can find the cause, you just should think of, well, maybe it's a neurologic cause and the neurologic problem has a structural problem somewhere in the spine. Which I never realized. I, it was a light bulb moment whenever I put that together about the neck and the vagus nerve and the stomach. So. Everybody at home has been real supportive, you know, for me to come down here and try to get help. And, you know, I'm just walking testimony back at home because they can, where they work with me, they awesome. see the improvements every day and they know that it's working and um, everybody's been great. Tommy, over the years, I have had people tell me, and I think you're going to fall into this category, that Tommy version 2.0 is going to be way better than Tommy version 1.0. Just meaning that you understand, like, there was things that were going on in your body even before you got COVID. Right. And you didn't realize, like, all these subtle things, mm -hmm. they related to your neck instability, though you didn't even know you had it. Right. So it means that probably, like, say if we did this interview a year from now, uh, you know, Tommy version 2.0, it's going to be unbelievable. So in other words, like, besides just getting over the symptoms you know that you have now but you'll probably see that geez like I didn't realize like I did have a little bit of brain fog or I did have a little bit of um, you know other neurologic things mm -hmm. that now I don't have so like literally now that I have neck stability I have like vibrant health let's right. just say that vibrant health yeah, the so. cognitive yeah the cognitively is much improved since I started these injections awesome so yeah, what would you tell somebody listening at home um, it is worth taking a leap of faith and trying to get yourself uh, fixed. That's the most important thing. Like, don't wait until you're so severe because it can be fixed early on. I feel like you see such complex. Yeah. High End it, stage. I see. I see when there's yes, whole body there shutdown. Yes. Yeah, some people are very hopeless and helpless, but um, you know, God did not promise us wonderful days every day we're going to have bad days and that's whenever he's here even when you don't feel like it like he's always with you 
um, but take a leap of faith and go get go get looked at. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your story. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.